today's Spirit God Studio. Today we're going to emboss a Hamsa hand. It also go by uh, quite a few different names, hand of Miriam, hand of um, Fatima and a couple more. So let's get started. For the first part of our project, we are going to need a blank um, to which we are going to mount or adhere our hand of Fatima or whatever you would like to call it onto. So for today's project, I'm going to use a plastic, these are little plastic um, dividers for files, uh, for smaller files and I have a couple of them and I've always been thinking what can I use this for and then I figure out you know what maybe I can sand them down and very important because they are plastic and smooth um, so sand them down before you start painting so once that is done I'm going to add a layer of gesso and I've already add a layer of gesso onto this one so once we start going I will add the paint to this one. I'm going to need paint. I'm going to go with a white background for this project. You're going to need a paintbrush and you can use the same paintbrush for your gesso as well as your um, paint and I'm going to use plain basic white titanium and or basic acrylic paint the white titanium we're going to need um, something to make a hole in unless you want to mount this onto something else but if you're just going to hang it you're going to need something to make holes in so you will measure your holes and then you will make it lesson learn I first painted mine so that you can dry so long and then once I start making my holes what has happened is it removed the the base here removed some of the paint so first make your um, holes before you paint and we're also going to need well the ruler just to mark where you are going to make your holes and then i'm just going to use this plain bathroom i don't know i call it bathroom chain to hang it up and i'm just going to thread it through and bring it together as i've mentioned i've already added my layer of gesso and i didn't go in any order because i would like to have a little bit of texture here so i just at random strokes i've added the gesso and i'm going to do exactly the same with the paint i'm going to put two blobs down and from there i'm just going to spread it out all over this little piece of plastic this one's got actually a little bit more coverage than what i wanted but it's going to be the back going to need our pewter or the metal that you're going to be working with and when I saw this texture plate with the hand on I just could not resist you know getting them for my online store because I'm really fascinated with this Hamza hand and you know just the whole meaning behind it and everything so we're going to use this texture plate and they are available in the store if you would like to get one or pick one up for yourself we're going to need painter's tape to adhere it um, the pewter to our texture plate and for that matter you can do any design um, if you have a texture plate or anything that can give your pewter texture that you you will see how we're going to do that we're going to start off using a paper stump by rubbing it over then we're going to go into a variety of stylus so we're going to use um, most probably the plastic one a teflon tool tip as well as a metal refiner and once our whole design is finished we're going to patina it i don't have any of the patina things here because i don't want to use it close to my um, tools we're going to adhere it oh and that's the other thing that we are going to need we are going to need sukwon tape i just realized i never took out some sukwon tape so we're going to need some sukwon tape as well 
and um, then we're going to cut it out once we've taped it and we're going to need a glass to cut it out you can use a cutting mat as well but with this tool i prefer working on a glass and then lastly i have a couple of stones here and i can't make up my mind which one i would like to put into that hollow there so by the end once it's on the pewter i will decide which one i'm going to use we're going to add or secure our pewter to the texture plate and it doesn't really matter if it's in the center or not for this design i'm going to cut it out so if it's you know skew it's not really going to have an effect on it however you can also do this design and add a border or a frame on it so when you're going to do it that way you will definitely have to make sure that your design is centered if you're not going to um, cut it out so you know from this point you can take your um, a roller just to give it a quick roll over so that you can at least see where to start and where the outline is and then the next one is we're going to start using our paper stump and we are going to start pushing our pewter or your metal into the design of the texture plate and when you take a little bit of time here it is going to make it easier when you're going to come in with your stylus once you start refining all the details and this one actually have quite a bit of details um, to it <music> stretch here and like with all texture plates I'm just going to try and push it up right up against the edges there and also what I did find when I was working in the inside I actually instead of holding my paper stump like this I turned it and I really felt like I had a little bit more um, weight or I don't know what to call it pressure pressure might be a better word so I had a little bit more pressure to push down when I hold it like this but find a way that is working for you next up is going to be our stylus and from this point you can actually use your teflon tip tool or your metal stylus i just find that personally it gives it a neater sort of if you go in with a wider point and then a more narrower or skinnier point than what you go in right with the skinny or the narrow point or the small point but again it's you might feel different about it but for me that's the way that i roll i usually oh what is that oh, we'll find out later on once we take it off must be something that got in there also when you do this i want to say try and start from one end and work yourself up to the other end or from there to this end but knowing myself i'm busy here and then i go a little and fiddle there and then i come back here but it is better to work schematically from one side to the others because then you know you're not going to miss any of this so let's see if i can do it today i really don't know but here you can see there where I couldn't get it in with the paper stump just going over with my plastic burnishing stylus or eraser tool 
it actually works very well for this so every little tool or every little step that you do um, or working with on this texture plate is just going to accentuate the design more so I'm going to continue on and I'm going to do everything now with the little purple stylus <laughs> to areas like this that's really tricky what you can do is you can turn your tool around and you can push it up with that and that will slide in very well there or alternatively when you're going to come in with your um, fine point your either your teflon tool or your refiner your metal refiner you would also be able to get through there next up is going to be the fine point teflon tip tool i was thinking of using my metal one um, it actually works really well for the outside when you are using this um, the bended area because it does cover quite a bit But unfortunately, it's keep on sticking to these gloves that I have to wear for a while now. But it does give it a nice, neat and tidy finish. You can also use the ball part and it will also give you a very nice finish. you know when you start working just see which stylus you like and which is your preference I can actually work on the inside I think I'm going to use it just for these big areas yeah and then around the little bubbles and things I will actually come in with my the Teflon tool tip Okay, so now next for me is we're just going to go around and we're going to accentuate each and every little bubble. With everything in life, how much time you put in, you are going to get a better result. Everything is refined using the um, Teflon tip tool, except for the outside where I have used my metal stylist so when it comes to the background here i mean this is already a very busy design but when it comes to these little areas here just when you make little marks in them make them all the same so when i did this one there was sort of a little bit of a scratch mark and i've just done it with the teflon tip tool so what i've done is i've gone into the rest of these and i merely just went up and down and up and down and up and down so it's just a small little scratch movement and it's just going to give it a little bit of extra texture as for this i went in there and this bigger area over here instead of going up and down i've just decided that i'm just going to make little around squirrels and things i'm not even going to lift up my teflon tip tool well i guess i have to when i need to go on to the next area but just think about extra details or x you know things that you can add just to add interest to an a design and by changing these little things you can do the same or use the same texture plate and you can get so many different designs from it or looks not really designs different looks from it so this is going to be very subtle i also could have come in with you know different tools but i figure while well, i just have this one here let me just quickly go and finish here 
and do this. And also by doing this, you make sure that you have a flat background. Our hand is done. So looking at the back, um, I think I am going to add wax to the two little flowers here as well as that flower. The rest of this, I don't really think I need to add any wax because I don't think the bubbles is going to press down. Um, and once I fold it with wax, I will quickly patina. And once the patina is done, I will add the Sukhwang tape and then we will move on to the next step. Next step is we are going to start cutting out and we are going to use our dry needle cutter to cut. I will link a video in the description to a tutorial on how to use the dry needle cutter. But basically, you work in short areas, make sure that you cut through your tape and then turn it and always cut towards yourself. done cutting smooth out your design and just always make sure that where you have these little sharp edges or sharp points come in with some scissors and just trim that down i did already spray this one i gave it two layers of spray and i have used the rust-oleum satin or no not satin clear gloss spray sorry the rust -Oleum clear gloss spray for this and that's why I use my scissors if I haven't sprayed it yet I don't think I would have used the scissors so yeah just always run your finger over and make sure there is no sharp edges time to assemble what I didn't think through was how I am going to connect this little bathroom chain or whatever you call it and I grab one of these little connectors that they usually use up when they are connecting them so I grab one of them and um, when it comes to this open area here traditionally this was called the evil eye and some of them still have an eye in i was looking at maybe placing this eye yeah but they miss a little gem there plus it has that but i could get rid of that so it didn't work and then i was thinking about this but it was just too small but really i just felt it needs a little pop of color so i went then it was with the green one or the blue one and i was just thinking the blue is closer although you get green eyes too but i just think the blue personally just make it pop once the hand is down then we will do the rest of the thing so it's fairly easy we're just going to remove the um, tape oh and i'm using my handy dandy little trash can that i've made so there is another video where I show how I made these little trash cans for the studio. And this one I'm just eyeballing more or less in the center. Um, let's see, oh, it's about two fingers, about two and about two. Yeah. And it's going to go down. And also just make sure that you do secure the ends as well as in yeah all, all around the um, edges I have to say it is a little bit dark in the background although I personally I like the the darker patina um, and the reason is just because there's so many you know details on top yeah it's really difficult or it was difficult to get in there with all the um to polish 
but I really, really, really think it came out nice. Okay, so I think this is done. So next step is going to be our gem. No, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm first going to add the chain. Looking at the little connector, it's um, looking very silver next to the chain. Not as bad when you have it here, but because it's going to be right up against the um, chain, I thought I'll come in with my Sharpie and I'll just color it blue so it will just mimic or give it that extra pop of color. This is not the easiest thing to do because it's so small. And I'm going to try and get on the inside as well. You can actually use um, alcohol inks for this. You can also use glass stains or the Verge very, I can never pronounce that name, um, that metal paint from Ranger, but for something small like this, I just think Sharpies is working the best. Okay, whoops. Yeah, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. Now my fingers is all blue. And we will move on. As for the chain, I have absolutely no idea how long I would like this to be. Just always make sure that when you do make your holes, that it is big enough for your chain to go through. Okay, let's see. Yeah. And once I'm done, I will seal the background too i kind of like the textured look and that's another thing you know when you paint like that you automatically create texture i think that um i think maybe a little bit shorter even shorter I want to have it too long uh, yeah I think round about there okay so pulling it back through again still a little bit more there and you can just use your scissors to cut this I think yep you can so the next step would be oh no I have two of these <laughs> just to pop it in here do that and oh my gosh I can't get it through Okay, let's try again. Let's see if we hold it like this. I don't know if you can see. And then we just press it down. Oh, no. Seriously, how difficult can it be? Oh, obviously very difficult. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and open this because I'm not going to be sitting here and struggling for hours on end. So I'm just opening this gaps here a little bit. Let's see if that's going to help. Yes, it does. And I'm just going to close it again. I might just have need to come in with the Sharpie again. Now the other trick is to get the... Okay. So this might be a little bit of a struggle. 
but eventually you will get it closed. Oh, I didn't open this one. Okay, I think I'm going to struggle here on my own. And then when that is done. Alright, let me see. Maybe it's open. Enough. Oh yeah, there you go. And just close it up. Because you could have used pliers for this too. So there you go. That is just a neat little, and you can also do it the um, sort of the opposite way, where you can have it like this. And oh, I actually think I like it that way. Oh yeah, I think I like it this way better. So it's just maneuvering that. So you have that pop of blue over there. And next, we're just going to add here our um, glass bead. Adhering our glass bead, I'm using the 450 Quick Dry Adhesive. And I'm just going to put a dollop on here. Close my glue. And... I'm going to place my gem down. I'm going to hold it down for a while just so that it's set. It says quick dry, but it does give you some working room. So just keep it still for a while. And more or less centered. And what I've also done is I've added my name at the bottom. So once this has been set, what I'll do is I'll give everything a spray just so that um, the paint don't go off because I do think it will scratch off. Usually acrylic paint, if it's not seal on plastic, it does um, scratch off. There's already a mark, but I'll just touch that one up. And our project is basically done now. Well, I know what half of my friends is going to get um, for their birthdays this year. They're all going to get a little Hansa or Hand of Fatima hand. And um, so what I did as well was I've just added a dollop of glue underneath that little connector so that you can stay put and also sort of be a focal point right on top or in line with that one so i really really enjoyed this project maybe because i just really like this the hamsa hand so i think it turned out very well and um yeah the pop of blue so when i'm going to make this for my friends i think what i'll do is everyone have their specific color i'm just going to put another color um, stone in there for them as always thank you so much for joining me in the studio today and always remember the world of reality has its limits the world of imagination is boundless